Today's idiot is Mr. Jones here, who seems to be a very, very delusional man. He's bought into all sorts of madness and con delusional conspiracies that are going. He seems to be unable to comprehend size of anything. His grasp on reality is extremely questionable. For instance, he believes air and water to be fuels. Despite he refuses to try and prove that, and we would love to see him trying ignite air or even set fire to water. It would be an amazing thing to see. But one of his biggest issues is that he believes gas turbine engines run on air. Several aircraft engineering personnel have over the year, over the months, invited Jones here to come and see for himself, to, so he can see if we are telling him lies, or and he is right, or he is complete loony loony bin, and reality escapes his comprehension. But like all truthers, he runs away scared. He is too frightened to come out of his little garden shed to come and see for himself. And he always cries that it, he'll come and see when his channel gets the subs he deserves. Well, if you're a real truther or truth seeker, the number of viewers you get would not matter. And what's the sub count got to do with you coming to see for yourself? You're just a coward. Like a lot of these truthers that claim this fuel hoax bollocks, Mr. Jones can't even name the jet engine that is supposed to be this fuelless product. He can't even explain how a jet engine should work despite having a bloody good book by Rolls Royce on the subject. He just cannot and refute and cannot explain how it works. He just waffles on about implosions and Fibonacci spirals. He is incapable of forming an idea of how all this fantasy nonsense put together could work. He just has no clue. His videos attract a hell of a lot of stupid people that are delusional and ignorant and seem to have the inability to go and look into things, research things and educate themselves. They just want to remain ignorant and delusional in their little sad little worlds. Now let's hear what he's got to say for himself on some of his mad nonsense fantasy videos that are completely bonkers. Right, this is just a quick one here on the M, what is it, M1 Abrams tank stuck in the mud. Let's just, but look, just listen to the jet engine inside this beast. Let's have a listen. I mean, the, 
that this particular tank, I've just done a Wikipedia on it, it's supposed to have a fuel capacity of 500 US gallons or 1900 litres. Well, a big massive oil tank in your back garden is a thousand litres. So where that, I mean, there is no fuel tanks on board these things. half 11 at night everyone's trying to go to sleep so I've got to keep my voice down but I just had to do this video I did say I'd given up and all that shit but uh, what, what can you do anyway this uh, 7879 Dreamliner is supposed to have done a 19 hour and 60 minute flight all the way from New York to Sydney total distance there of 10,066 miles 16,200 kilometers but what they're not really telling you. Look at the amount of fuel they're supposed to put in the wings. That, that is correct. 126,372 litres or 36,384 gallons. Now just let that sink in for a moment. 126,000 litres. And just grab hold of a litre bottle of water. And then you'll start to comprehend how ridiculous this is. What I've put down at the bottom here. These are these water butts. They're about a metre by a metre by a metre in height. And they hold a thousand litres, which is one metric tonne in weight. That would be 126 of these. In these tiny, skinny little wings. With these fancy little flip-ups at the end there. Now... It's just, it's in, it's an impossibility. <laughs> Once again, Mr. Jones, you prove you're incapable of doing the slightest bit of research. If you had, you would have found out quite easily where the fuel goes on a 787. Most of it is carried in the centre tank. Right, here we go. This is my pressure flow testing kit, which I use when I, well, I used to use when I was testing whether a property got enough pressure there for um, an unvented cylinder or a combi boiler. So you've got bar pressure here. I'll just pause that. That's liters per minute. Okay. All right. Let's just play on here. It's about as exciting as it gets. But um, just wanting to demonstrate to you um, what liters per minute looks like and stuff in an average house this is actually um, the supply we've got is boosted right here we go now that is slowed down because it's going through the spring mechanism okay just just to let people know but it's, it's the actual liters per minute and here we see it's sitting between the 10 and the 15 so you have 12 and a half liters per minute which is absolutely plenty there for a good shower right yeah, so it's a great tool, really handy. I use the outside tap here because there's no restrictors on it, no flow nozzles in it or anything like that. So it gives you a proper true reading. And uh, yeah, boom, stand, that's standing pressure, by the way, in case people are wondering what that is. So that's just saying what, what we've got there, over three and a half bar standing pressure. Plenty, absolutely plenty. And what I'll do in a second, I'll just I'll turn on the, the hot water supply to the tap there just to show you that it's a balanced system and if we pause it there you can see again bang in the middle 12 and a half liters per minute so it's a it's a really good system i've got I'll, i could show you the full setup but um depends if people are interested leave me a comment but this one is just to, this really is to help people get an idea of this um the giant planes that are claiming they're putting three and a half thousand liters per minute into these wings can you just fathom how ridiculous this this is okay i i yeah i've walked i've worked with water for many years now and 
As far as I can tell, aviation fuel is still a liquid. Yes, it weighs slightly lighter. 700, uh, was it 0 0.79 to a litre? So not quite as heavy as a litre, but still pretty heavy. But it's the volume. Take a look, Mr. Jones. Take a look. Study. Look at what that says on that panel. Maximum refuel pressure of three and a half bar or 50 psi. Look at that coupling. It's a self sealing coupling to prevent fluid le leaking out after disconnecting the connector. And if you take a look at those, those little bits of technical information on various aircraft, now you will see they all have one thing in common maximum refuel pressure of three and a half bars and the flow rate on uh, are stated on some of them tends to be in about a f just over 1500 liters a minute now you can do a calculation if if you knew which one to use and there are several that you could calculate flow rate from pressure using the diameters of the hose. And the hose is stated a standard connector, two and a half inch diameter, which is about 63.5 millimeters. But you're too simple to work this out. But then again, you do keep saying you are an expert plumber and, and you have worked with water you don't seem to know the difference between pressure and flow rate and here we go this is the um, Airbus A380 here oh, it's at, when I did try to upload this but it got blocked by the usual YouTube police that police my little tiny little YouTube site for whatever reason but here we have three and a half thousand liters per minute going in to the wings and you can even see here that they just loop round people are saying it's, oh it's because they're reinforced rubber hoses and all this jazz that kind of pressure they would be flip they would be dancing about all over the place worse than a fire hose And not only that, you can see there's two of them going in, but there's no outlet here to remove the air from inside the wings, so they would just rip the wings apart. <laughs> How little you really, really know. The air is allowed to escape through vent tanks and vents that are situated at the wingtips of all aircraft to prevent this overpressurization of the wing. Please do your research. Oh, sorry, I forgot. You're a truther, you're a truth seeker. You're too bone idle to get away from your computer. You can only research watching YouTube videos instead of going and having looking at the facts. And then not only that as well when they're being filled up. So I'm just, um... They would, um, they would just, they would droop. They would droop with the weight because they're designed to move six foot up in the air and six foot down. The landing gear chocks should not touch their tires, but the parking brake must be on. The weight of the fuel can suddenly compress the landing gear and lower the aircraft. Make sure there is no equipment below the aircraft which can cause damage.
and um, why jet engines do not hold any liquid fuel in the wings. If you notice here, okay, all of these access panels are open. These are a good idea for when you, things go wrong in the future. You can just remove them and get your hand in there and fish through wires and whatnot. But they do this stress test, okay? I'll play a bit more. We have in front of us more than 2,500 tons of steel. No, you don't. It would never fly. It's it's made of aluminium with uh, titanium. <laughs> Aluminium and titanium, that it's it's the most it's strongest light well, the titanium strongest, lightest weight material on earth. Um how it's made is, is um debatable, but you thin it out and it's it's extremely strong and lightweight. That's why most of the aircraft built of it, it's just not it's not a big lump of steel that that they try and get off the go. What a letter. See, they just lies. This is the cage of the bird. We will go to the extremes to check All right. Extreme to check the structure of the bird, the, the aeroplane. But at no point here do you see any liquid fuel sloshing about, being injected. There's another stress test as well, which, which I can't find. I had it on my old channel where you can look straight down the wing. They do not put any liquid inside this jet fuel or water or anything else to test the wing. What Jones has failed to comprehend here is the purpose of this actual test. This test is designed to see how fatigue can affect the wing and at what point does this wing break beyond its design limit. And he has got absolutely no idea that actually putting fuel inside the wing reduces the bending stresses. And the actual leak check of the wing will be is done with compressed air to make sure all the seals are correct uh, are functioning correctly. And the final leak check is done when the aircraft is fueled. And if you've managed to get to the end of this video, please go over to Arctic Reflections and check his Flat Earther Who Thinks That Aircrafts Are Powered By Air And Ships By Water video. Uh, he released it this morning while I was still working on this one. And I think it's by far, far, far better than mine. But it is debunking Mr. Jones as well. And it is very, very entertaining. Please check out Arctic Reflections and his channel. It's well worth it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And we shall leave you with extraction of fuel from a 787 main tank as a fuel sample. And then the sound of fuel rushing on board the refuel valves into the fuel refuel manifold on a 737 price